Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to add a gradient fill to text using Inkscape. Before I dive into this tutorial, if you want to see more tutorials like this one using free and open source software like Inkscape, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. All right, so let's dive in here. I have Inkscape opened up, and what we want to do for starters is come over here and grab the text tool from the toolbox. You can see the shortcut key for that is the T key. And up top here, I'm going to change my font. I can use this drop down here and select the font, or I can simply type the font in here if I know the name of it. And I'll come over here and just change this to 144. And then, so this is the size of the text. So now what I'll do is I'm just going to click on my canvas using the text tool. And with the caps lock key on, I'll just type Inkscape. You could type whatever text you want. And if you want to resize the text, you can always come over here and grab the select tool and just click and drag the handles out. And if you hold the control key, it'll maintain the original aspect ratio of the text. Release your mouse when you're ready. Let's align this as well real quick. So up top here, you'll see I have align and distribute objects, which is shift control A. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'll come over here under align, choose relative to page for the dropdown. And we're just going to center align this on the vertical and horizontal axis. So let's exit out of here. So of course we can change the color of our text simply by left clicking on a color in the color swatches here. But what if we want to add a gradient to this? Well, all we have to do is come over here to the toolbox and click on the create and edit gradients tool, also just known as the gradients tool. So we'll left click on this. And now you can simply come over here and click and drag your mouse. And if I hold the control key, it'll drag it in straight line mode. And you'll see that will add a gradient to our text. So there's tons of different nuances to this tool. First off, if I come over here, you'll see my little toggle snapping on off icon. If I click that and toggle this on, when I click and drag this, it will snap to the bottom of the text box. And if I click on the top handle and do the same, it'll snap to the top. I can also click and drag this outside the text so it doesn't have to be you know, inside the text box. The handles don't have to be inside the text box. So we can resize those. It doesn't have to be straight. I can make this a diagonal line if I want and you know, change up the shape of that. But let's just reset this, hold the control key to make it straight up and down. And I'm just gonna set the handles a little bit outside there. So right now I have this set to a linear gradient and I know that because up top here in the control bar, you're gonna see it says new and then it says center linear gradient. There is a radial gradient next to that. I'll get into that later. And right now we are creating a gradient fill for the main fill of the text. You can also do this for the stroke of the text. So yes, you can have gradient strokes in Inkscape. Then right here we have our custom gradients. The only one in here is the one we're using. You could choose how this is repeated and you could choose which stop is selected, which is going to be the little handles. So right now we have the first stop selected. If I click the drop down, I can select the second stop there. Or of course I can simply left click on this with my mouse and it will select that stop. I can add new stops by coming up top here and clicking insert new stop. So by default, it'll place the stop in the middle of the gradient or I can delete that stop by coming over here and clicking delete stop. So what if we don't like the colors we're working with and we wanna change them? We can customize our colors a few different ways. First off, I can come over here and click on a handle or click on a stop and come over here and I can just left click on the color inside of my color bar and you'll see the color will update here. And you can get a better idea if I click and drag this and snap it there. So let's just click and drag and snap to the top and bottom. So we just changed the top color. It's kind of similar to what it was. Let's go with more of a yellow color. And if I come over here and click on the bottom handle, I can change that one now the same way. So just click on the color in the color bar here and that will change the color. 
Now this looks pretty good. However, what do we do if we want to customize our color even further? Let's say we have a hex code from some sort of color palette and we wanna use that specific color and not just a color here inside the color bar. Well, what we can do is come over here to where it says fill. Doesn't matter which stop you're clicked on. Just come over here, double click on the color box that says fill and that's gonna bring up our fill and stroke dialog and just make sure you're in the fill tab here and then also that you have the linear gradient option selected. So you're gonna see this little gradient editor bar and you're gonna see these sliders. So right now there's a black dot on this slider here with the red. So that just indicates that that is the handle we have selected. And then this is going to be the other handle or the other stop. And we can drag these to reposition them and you're going to see that as we drag them, you're going to get a little dot here. So that's going to be the stop. So this is repositioning that bottom stop. And I can reposition the top stop as well. And you're going to see this little arrow here that says stops. It might be collapsed for now. You can click on that to expand it. And that's going to also show you the stops here and which one you have selected. So you can click between them to select the different stops. And of course you can use the color wheel over here to change the colors. And you're gonna see that as I click on the stop, the little black dot will swap between the stops there, indicating which one you have selected. So you can either come over here and change the color mode and just sort of cycle through the colors manually using the slider. So that's one way to come up with a custom color. And that's RGB, maybe I go CMYK, go with a CMYK color. So you can mess around with the colors that way, or you can come down here to where it says RGBA, and you can insert a color using a hex code. So let me come over here to my browser. I do have coolers.co opened up, and let's say I wanna go with this color here. So control C to copy it, minimize this, come over here, control V to paste, and there we have our custom color. Let's come back here to the browser, do the same with this other color. Control C to copy, minimize that. Change the stop to the top stop or the starting stop, not to make this confusing. And come over here, Control V to paste that. And now we have our top color. So let's come over here and reset the position of our stops to the defaults. I can also add a stop from here by coming down to the bottom and you'll see a plus icon I can click that plus icon and that will automatically add a stop there to the middle. And by default, it's gonna be an average of the two colors basically. So it's just gonna show up here as a stop. And you can always change the color once again using the sliders or let's come back and select another color here, control C and paste that color here, control V. So there we have another new color. So let me hit Control Z. I actually like this better with these colors. So you can also change the gradient type that you're using. Right now we're using a linear gradient, which is selected up here. If I wanna change this to a radial gradient, I can come over here and select the radial gradient option. Now our gradient is a radial gradient and the handles look slightly different. So what I can do is I can drag the handle outwards. This is basically changing the aspect ratio of the gradient or I can come over here and expand this handle outwards and let's use the middle click on the mouse to move over. And this is basically going to expand the radius here. So we've got aspect ratio and radius. And of course we can adjust the stops here. And you're gonna see that as I adjust the stop on this handle or on this line here, it's also adjusting it over here as well. And by the way, I did want to point out, if you wanted to manually set the value of your stop, you can come over here to where it says stop offset and just type a numerical value. So for example, 0.75, hit the enter key, and that's going to give you a nice precise placement of that stop. So we can also change this to 0.5 and that will put that back in the middle. So I mentioned earlier in this video that you can also add a gradient to the stroke of your text. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So I'm still on the gradient tool. What I can do is come over here and change this from create gradient in the fill to create gradient in the stroke. And now I can just click and drag my mouse to draw my gradient and release. 
So you're gonna see that it's faintly showing a stroke here with the gradient. So obviously we need to tweak the settings here. What I can do is come over here to where it says stroke style inside of fill and stroke. So stroke style. First off, let's just make the stroke larger and I'll change this to five pixels, hit the enter key. So now we can see this a little better. So the second thing we can do is come over here, click on a handle and then just change the color of this to white. Come over here, click on a handle, change the color of this. We'll just go turquoise. So that's one option. You can also come over here to where it says stroke paint. Click on that and that's going to give you the same menu that we were using for the fill option. So there's the fill gradient. Here's the stroke gradient. So same thing, we can change the position of this, add stops, remove stops, and of course change the color of stops using the sliders or using the RGBA field. And one thing I forgot to mention is that this little arrow here will actually reverse the gradient. So if I wanted to change the direction, I could click that arrow and it changes the direction. So one last thing I'll leave you with is that you can actually change the text and all of the gradient settings will remain the same. So if I come over here and I change my tool to my text tool and I just double click on this text to select it all and then with the caps lock key on I'll type some new text so I'll type gradient. You'll see that all of the settings for the fill and the stroke have remained exactly the same despite changing all the text. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.